Hello everyone, my name is Donald M. Osgood Sr. I'm a write-in candidate for mayor of Boston this year, November 7th, so I hope after this video, you'll consider me as your top choice for mayor of Boston. I'm married. Been married 15 years, it'll be 16 years to my beautiful wife, Vanessa Osgood. And between us, we have six children, five boys and one girl. We grew up in the South End, longtime residents of the South End. And when we grew up in the South End, it was very diverse. Um, family in the back bay, which takes me to one of the reasons that I'm running for mayor of Boston is the housing issue. which we saw start out in the back bay and trickled into the south end and it's moving its way up through Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan. And at that time when we were growing up, there were more family oriented, you know, families in the, in the south end. There was mothers, fathers, kids, everybody was a family in the south end. And we've kind of moved away from that. And when you think about the gentrification, you know, you now where are those families today? Those families can't afford to live in the South End. They can't afford to live in the Back Bay. At one point, they could live in, in Roxbury. Now they're moving further up. And long before you know it, there won't be any families that started out in the city of Boston, in the city of Boston. Like when I apply for jobs, I don't put Roxbury. I just put Boston. You give me something Mayor Walsh, city leaders can do to help quickly. We always have a jazz festival in my neighborhood, but maybe they can have a jazz festival, you know, in another park in the neighborhood so that more people can come to that area. Instead of a meeting of the minds, these issues are better served by a meeting of the hearts and a melding of families. In Boston, Rondella Richardson, WCVB News Center 5. And a professor at Tufts University, James Jennings, analyzed some of the census and population projects for 2021. He tells us he found the community divisions won't likely change much and that children ages 5 to 19 will still be living in segregated communities. So one of the things that we want to work on right out the gate is how do we allow developers to build, but at the same time make housing affordable for those families who don't make $70,000, who maybe one person is the head of the household and they're only making $40,000. So we need to figure that out ahead of time before we tell developers that it's okay for them to build. It's just, it's out of hand. For a second straight day, violence in Boston. It's not the gun that kills the person. It's the person with the gun that kills a person. For nearly two hours Thursday, police and SWAT focused their attention on this triple decker in Dorchester. Looking for a suspect who they say pulled out a gun and shot a man in his 20s as he was walking near Bowdoin and Norton streets. It's really scary. I don't even feel safe going to the store. This is senseless acts of violence in our city. We are a better city than that. The mayor and police commissioner are at their breaking points. Six people were shot in Mattapan and Roxbury on Wednesday. Three died. The next thing that we'll deal with as we're talking about safety, we have to put together a great plan on this violence. is going on in the, in the city and housing is a big issue because a lot of the young people that are doing what they do they're homeless or their households are in a real tight situation so we need to make sure that we deal with their mental health issues we need to put together a program that helps parents who have you know maybe a single parent who has two or three children we need to help them as well with finances and other other necessities that they need to make sure they raise their children the right, right way. And then even with the Boston Police Department. So if we start doing more community policing and start to bridge those gaps between community and Boston Police, I think we'll see a decrease in our crime as well because then the, the, the people will know each other. You know, Boston Police it's an organization, but it's also their pe the regular people just like me and you. And if we can get them to come into the neighborhoods again, like when I was a youth, we can see that familiarity starting to grow. And then as people start to get familiar with one another, 
then things start to change. Then we're no longer enemies, and it's no longer us against them, but it's us as a community working together. You come to work, you coming into the community, you know Mr. So-and-so or little Johnny down the street here where you working at, and they know you, and they're saying, hey, how you doing, officer? And I think that's going to bring some also, also bring some change to the way we look at police and police look at our young people, and it'll bring a better quality of life into our neighborhoods. So we need to work on those things. And I believe that with the skills I have as a manager for eight years with Jiffy Loop through the Shell Corporation, I'm able to put the right people in the right positions to get the right job done so that we can get the results that we're looking for. A safe Boston, a fair Boston, a just Boston, a Boston that's without racism where every person that lives in the city of Boston feels like they're important. So those are, the, those are the reasons that I'm running for mayor, and I hope that you give me some consideration and think about the track record of those that have come before me and those that are also running. Think about the track record for our city and look at where our city is right now. If you feel like our city is fair, of course, then vote for those who are already in place. But if you feel like we can go a little bit further and tackle some more things that need to be tackled, Donald and Miles Good Senior is your man for change in the city of Boston. For the good of all, Donald and Miles Good Senior for man. Thank you and God bless you.